Hi, I'm Pastor Travis Norton, Senior Pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Colorado Springs. So glad you found us online for these worship services. Uh, today we're, we're talking about a joy that unites us as God dwells with us. And so we do pray that you will find a, a sense of that joy of Christmas today. In the life of our congregation, we're getting ready for Christmas Eve services. We're going to have something every week, every day during the week of Christmas. So on Tuesday, we have Blue Christmas service at 6 p.m. Wednesday, our Wednesday night light service at 7 p.m. Thursday, we're going to have a Christmas Eve service early at 7 p.m., a traditional Christmas Eve service. And then on Friday, we'll have uh, four additional Christmas Eve services. Two and four are inside, and seven and nine are outside. Christmas Day, we have worship service at 10 a.m., and then on Sunday the 26th, we'll have one service at 9.30 a.m. So a lot going on, but stuff that fills us with joy. And we pray that, that you can participate and join us in, in anything that you're available to join us in. But let's prepare our hearts for this service and pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus and for the gift of joy. We pray that you would smile upon us today and fill us with that that joy that unites your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink even before his birth. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit." He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. 
The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, I think that Luke has a soft spot for the elderly. Last week, we read the story of old Simeon and the the prophet Anna of a great age at age 84. And today we read the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and Luke describes them as getting on in years. Luke tells stories of hope and joy, of promises fulfilled to those who may think that life has passed them by that the the best years are behind them. Zechariah and Elizabeth experienced something that countless couples have gone through, wanting children and yet not being able to conceive. Sometimes these stories end with a child after years of trying and perhaps medical intervention, but just as often these stories end without children and a couple accepting that grief into their lives. Some of you know that all too well. Zechariah and Elizabeth had hope for children. They continued to pray to God as they went on with their lives for a child. And I wonder how many of you have a prayer like that in your life, a prayer that you've been praying for years and years and years, maybe a prayer to find a spouse or a prayer to have children, or maybe a prayer for your children that that they would be saved or helped or blessed in some way. When I was younger, I had a a list of people that I would pray every night. I would kneel before, at bedtime, I would kneel before my bed and and pray this list of names of about a dozen people that I wanted God to give faith to. And on that list were people like my dad and my best friend, that I just wanted them to become Christians. There are prayers that we pray throughout our lives that come from the depths of our longing but are prayed so often for so long that they almost become part of the background of our lives. And it's easy, isn't it, to lose the expectation that God will ever answer that prayer. Zechariah and Elizabeth prayed to have children, even as they got along in years, and the possibility diminished over time. And then came this moment the pinnacle moment of Zechariah's career as a priest in the temple. His section was serving and they cast lots and it fell to him to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord, to go behind that curtain into the Holy of Holies to offer incense. This privilege was a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So Zechariah, surrounded by family and friends and the faithful, made the trip through that huge curtain God had promised Israel centuries before that he would meet Israel's priest in that room, in the inner sanctum. Exodus 36 says, You shall place it in front of the curtain that is above the Ark of the Covenant, in front of the mercy seat that is over the covenant, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall offer fragrant incense on it, a regular incense offering before the Lord throughout the generations. And now it's Zechariah's turn. His turn to do what Aaron had done, had been the first priest to do, to enter the place where the Ark of the Covenant was and place the incense on the altar, continuing the tradition. And I think of those of you who set up this altar every week. Do you ever think about that continuation of the servants who have set the Lord's table before you in this place, in other churches, going all the way back to to the disciples at the Last Supper? I know whenever I stand behind the altar and lift up the elements, I'm humbled by the privilege. And I think about watching my pastors do that when I was a child 
And I think about Martin Luther lifting him up for the first time and, and trembling. He was so nervous and so in awe of the holiness that he spilled the wine all the way back to Jesus lifting the bread and the cup, saying, this is my body, this is my blood. Zechariah entered the sanctuary, a holy and mysterious place to continue this tradition. And it would have been enough to simply enjoy the privilege of being one of the few who got to go behind that curtain and stand in the Holy of Holies. But then when he's there in the holiest of places, the angel Gabriel shows up and announces to Zechariah that his prayer had been heard, that he and Elizabeth's prayer had been heard by God and would be answered. That background prayer, the one they had been praying over and over for years, the one they thought that no one heard. God had been listening. And now Gabriel announces to Zechariah that his wife will bear him a son. Now let me give you some advice in case this ever happens to you. If an angel of the Lord ever appears to you and tells you that something amazing has happened, I want you to heed this advice because it's happened to many of the people in the Bible. It happened to Abraham and Sarah. It happened to Moses. It happened to Zechariah. When the angel of the Lord comes to you and tells you something amazing is going to happen, no matter how improbable it is, no matter how it defies everything that you know about how life works, don't argue with the angel. <laughs> don't mansplain to the heavenly being about how life works. Your response should simply be, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, I believe. Keep your objections to yourself. Don't argue like Moses did. Don't laugh like Sarah did. Just receive it, give thanks, and rejoice. Zechariah did not follow that advice. He talked back to the angel of Gabriel. How can this be since I'm an old man and my wife is getting along in years? First of all, never utter those words. My wife is getting along in years. <laughs> that will never go well for you. Gabriel is not amused. His response to Zechariah is to make him mute until the child is born. It reminds me of an old joke about a pastor who decided on a Sunday morning that he just didn't feel like going into work. And so he called in sick and instead went to the golf course and played a game of golf, actually played the best game of golf he had ever played in his life, got to the 18th tee and hit a hole in one. And the angel and the Lord were watching, and the angel looked at the Lord and said, why would you let him do that? I mean, he sinned, he called in sick, and now he's golfing, you give him a hole in one? And the Lord said, who's he going to tell? <laughs> Can you picture Zechariah running out of the sanctuary after encountering Gabriel, having his prayers answered, motioning but unable to speak to tell the good news? that he's going to have a son. Can you imagine the joy contained in Zechariah, just waiting to spill out? Nine months he had to wait before he could fully tell the story of what happened in the sanctuary on that day. Of course, the news broke before that as Elizabeth began to show. Dwell with us, Lord, and give us joy to unite us. Gabriel said to Zechariah about his son to be born, you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will turn parents to their children and make a people ready and prepared for the Lord. And isn't that true? The birth of a child in our families brings us together. We want to share in the joy of a new member of our clan. We throw baby showers and we bring gifts and food to the new parents. Grandparents fly in from wherever they live and spend weeks celebrating and helping the new parents. When a baby is in our midst, don't we all gather around and look into those innocent eyes and, and smile and hope they smile back in return? Even if it's just gas, we don't care. Dwell with us, Lord, and give us joy that unites. I think about 
all the celebrations in my life that have brought people together. Probably my wedding was one of the happiest days of my life, in part because of all the people from different time periods of my life that came together. My college friends and my church friends and my family and my seminary friends all came together to celebrate my happiness. Think about those moments in your life when the joy united the people, when you celebrated and happiness spilled over into the night. I think about that day in August when we had the grand opening of the Peel House and our joy at, at renovating that beautiful mansion spilled into the community and people from all over the neighborhood came to celebrate. Or even just last week when we were out on the lawn and doing lessons and carols from the, the Peel House porch and every seat was full, did you notice the people who were walking by from the neighborhood stopped and gathered just on the other side of the fence? to watch and listen as we told the greatest story of God giving his son. And of course, pie fest after that, I mean, it's hard to be unhappy with a piece of pie in your hand. Joy does that. Joy unites us. It brings us together. It's contagious. It, it gathers a crowd. And God has given this congregation many opportunities throughout a very difficult year to come together rejoicing. Weddings and baptisms and confirmations and first communions. The church is a place of celebration where the Lord smiles upon us and brings us together. And now we look forward to Christmas again and the gift of another child, the Lord Jesus, whose birth caused heaven itself to break forth in songs that woke the shepherds. Every year, we celebrate this gift in the grandest style we know. We pull out all of our decorations from closets and storage units. Did you know of the two storage units in Luther Hall? One of them was dedicated just to Christmas decorations for First Lutheran. We hang the garland. We light the tree outside so that the whole city can join us in the celebration of Christ's birth. And later this afternoon on this stage, our children, who are a gift to us and bring us joy by their very existence, will again tell us the story of Jesus' birth, of God's great love. God has heard our prayers. God has heard our longing for salvation, and he has sent his own son to bring us joy. It has been a tough couple of years, and I think for many of us there's like a, a low-grade depression that we're all experiencing because things are so different from what we remember and what we want them to be. But even though your celebrations and your traditions may be different, the story hasn't changed. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The shepherds were asleep in the fields when they were awakened by the angels. Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy. For who? For all the people, we gather again this season around the good news, the good news that one day will fully unite all creation around the gift of God's love. And I invite you to just receive the story again for yourself, into your heart. Hear again the news that God sent his own son for you to save you. Feel the smile upon, of God upon this world, giving what is most precious so that we might find eternal joy. Do you know that you are loved? Do you know that everything is going to be okay? Do you know that God has heard every single one of your prayers? Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, receive this story again. Dwell with us, Lord, and give us joy to unite us. The joy of a father and mother finally receiving the child they prayed for. The joy of people seeing light after walking in darkness. The joy of angels announcing salvation to the world. Dwell with us, Lord, and give us joy to unite. Amen. 
We do pray that God spoke to you today through the message. If you want to take next steps, we've created an online course called Basic Training that goes through the basics of the Christian faith uh, step by step. So I encourage you to take that. That's also on this YouTube channel. I encourage you to support this ministry online through your tithes and offerings. You can do that by going to our website, www.flccs.net. And then also in the description of this video, you'll see a link to a connection card. That's a great way to contact us. Let us know if you were moved to come to faith during this time. If you're ready to talk to a pastor about next steps, we'd love to talk to you there. Just let us know that you were here and any comments, we appreciate that. May God bless you as you continue to walk with the Lord.